All right, so we've talked a lot about data so far this semester, um, but our focus really has been on CSV or comma separated values uh, formatted data. Um, and there's a good reason for that. Um, it's definitely the most common that you're going to find. Um, we can easily work with it in Excel and things like that. Um, and it's supported by just basically every code library that we might want to use and every tool that we might want to use for this stuff. Um, but of course, data comes in lots of other formats. So we're going to take a look at some of those here. Uh, but before we look at some specific examples, I'd like to talk about um, this idea of human readable versus machine readable data. Um, and we can think of these different formats as kind of falling under these two categories. Uh, so human readable data is by far you know, the most kind of common historically. Here's an example from a book. And if you look at lots of um, old books, you'll find these kinds of tables. They're printed in order that people could read them. And, you know, before we had access to the internet or calculators even, um, it was really common to see huge tables, books, and, you know, entirely filled with these things um, meant that for people to be able to look them up. But of course, being locked in this format means that, um, you know, right now this is a PNG, so it's just pixels. A machine doesn't know what to do with it. And some of you have already found this already. You will sometimes horrifically find data stored in PDF, which is like the data visualizer's worst nightmare. Um, but of course, this is really human readable. It's really easy for us to look at and understand. Um, machine readable data might look something like this. So this is the, an output of a, um, a digital file in the way it's actually kind of like stored in the computer. And clearly we, or almost all people, can't really read or understand this at all. It's just numerical representation of everything. Um, somewhere in between might be something like a barcode if it includes written text with it. So this is something that could be read easily by a machine and by a human. So here, you know, we could read the ISBN number or we could scan it with a barcode reader. Um, and I think a CSV file is also kind of an interesting middle point. So here is some data in um, sort of the raw way it's stored as a CSV. We can definitely read this and understand it, though um, if it's a really big file, it might be a little difficult. Um, but then if we open it in a different application, here it is in Quick View down in my Mac, but you could open it in Excel or Sheets, and we see it reformatted into a really readable form. Um, and this is one of the reasons CSV is really great. It's very easy to edit the raw data, and it's also really easy to visualize it and to see it and work with it. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of different common data storage formats um, that you might encounter as you're working on stuff. So our data is going to be pulled from the US Geological Survey. Um, and this is real time earthquake data. Uh, well, actually, this is historical, but you can actually get real time data as well. And it includes, if we look at the header here in the CSV file, um, the source for where this data came from, an ID number, a uh, version number, which must have to do with how it's recorded, um, the date and time, latitude, longitude, magnitude, which is the intensity, the depth below the surface, um, and then some other uh, like regional information and stuff like that. Um, so this is that data in CSV format, which looks very familiar. We can see its uh, rows and columns separated by commas. So yeah, we've done lots of CSV already. Let's look at the, the data then in the same data in another format. And this is perhaps going to be the most common other format you're going to find. Um, and that's called JSON. And I'll put the links to all these things um, in the description here so you can check them out. Um, but JSON is, stands for JavaScript Object Notation, though it actually doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the programming language JavaScript. Um, and this is very common. But if we just open this file here and take a look at it, we can see it looks really different than, um, than our CSV file. So JavaScript, or JSON, sorry, is, um, it divides things by this idea of objects. So instead of like rows and columns, um, we can think of each of these guys between the curly brackets as being um, an object or a thing in our data set. And in this case, they're earthquakes. Um, so I've got the ID number here. And then the other thing you're going to see is that we have this um, value and a colon and then another value. And we um, this is a key and value pair. So SRC here is the label for this. And the value for SRC for this, the source is CI. Um, the date time uh, variable here is this. Etc. Etc. 
And then we can see these are separated by commas. Um, JSON is also very human readable, which is one of its really great traits. And it allows us to nest data. That's something we can't really do with CSV. If we wanted to um, include, you know, like additional sort of like nested things here, um, we just wouldn't be able to easily do that with CSV. You might figure out like a hack or a way around that. Um, but that's one of the places that JSON is um, really awesome. Um, and again, it's also human readable, which is great, and human editable, though its format is a little funky and takes some practice, and it's really easy to make errors, I found, um, with this. So there's a really, really helpful tool. If you're building your own JSON file from scratch or modifying one, you may want to use this um, a thing called a linter, and a linter um, checks for errors and will suggest um, changes, if it's a good one, um, in, uh, in this case in uh, JSON. So if I grab this here um, and paste it in, and then I lint this. Ah, so it's actually giving me some errors here. That's interesting. It's saying um, these are all, ah, these are all about spaces instead of tabs. That really shouldn't be an error, I don't think. Um, but otherwise, we're not seeing any problems. But if we, for example, were to use single quotes by accident and run this through, um, we're seeing here use double quotes, not single quotes. So um, JSON is a little less flexible um, because it just, you know, there's more prone to errors, but it's really quite awesome. Um, and we'll look at ways that we can work with this um, if you find some data in JSON format. Um, so. That's JSON, that's gonna be really common. Let's talk about a few other formats that maybe are a little less common, um, at least for data these days. Um, the next is XML, which uh, is short for Extensible Markup Language. Um, again, I'll put all these links here. Um, and this is, if you've done web design, this looks really familiar. This is a format that's very much the same. And in fact, HTML is built on top of this. Um, and you can see here that uh, we kind of, uh, have a different way of thinking about this. It's a little bit like JSON in that we're um, separating this as objects, um, but we're using these tags in the um, carrots or the pointy brackets. So here I have an earthquake and then it notes the end of that, um, what, everything that's inside um, with this slash and then the same tag over here. And then good XML will be indented to make it easier for you to read. So here's the latitude and then um, the end of that latitude tag and then everything in between. Now, XML, unlike HTML, you can create any tags you want. There's no like rules or predefined names for that. Um, and we can see these listed here. Um, so yeah, it looks kind of like the JSON, but already we can see, you know, this I think is much easier for us to read, to understand, you know, what the value is and stuff like that. Um, and then there's a, another format that you might come across, probably not so much for our work um, because we're not making maps, um, but there's uh, this format called KML, which stands for Keyhole Markup Language. Um, this was sort of, well, it was developed by a company that was then bought by Google. Um, and this is a common format for map related data. Now, map data is a whole other story. There's some really, really complicated systems for storing that that we're not gonna look at here. Um, but you can see it's based on XML. It's got very similar sort of like tag things, um, but it's this has a very clear syntax. There's a lot of very specific things that we kind of have to use to encode things so that we can map with it, though you can also add additional data. Uh, but same as XML, we think of this as kind of object structure. And then the last format we're gonna talk about, of course, there's lots more that we haven't been, able, you know, we're not gonna be able to get to um, is SQL. So once your data gets big enough, or if you want to do complex work with it, all the previous formats we've looked at start to kind of grind to a halt or cause problems. Um, they're just, they're text, they're not that fast, they don't allow kind of complex work with them, um, at least not without a lot of code. And SQL, uh, which stands for Structured Query Language, and um, there's a version of this called, uh, that's usually pronounced SQL, MySQL, um, is used online a lot for uh, websites that have databases and stuff like that. So if you're logging into a website or looking at a blog, it's very common that it's stored in that format. Um, so this is what that same data looks like. You can see it's way more complicated. There's a lot more um, sort of like rules for how we define things. For example, we define the type of value that we're storing here. Um, so the version is an integer. Um, Datetime is actually in the special format for that. 
uh, latitude and longitude are float, which is, um, has decimal places. And the, the reason, oh, and then like here, we can actually specify text and a certain number of characters. And the reason we do this is that um, this really optimizes storage. If you're storing thousands or millions of items and you want to be able to work with them, this ensures that it's really uh, efficient for that. Um, and then the really cool, so this creates a table from, from this. We can add new items to it. We can remove items. But the real power from SQL is that we can um, do complex queries. So we can request data that meets certain parameters and it handles it, it handles it really quickly. The downside is that we can't really do this without code. This is human readable to an extent, but to work with it, we really need to use code. And often these tools are kind of complicated or in the command line. So we're not gonna talk about how to use SQL or SQL um, in this class, but if you're interested, um, you know, I'll put a link to this tutorial from W3Schools. That's kind of a good place to get started. And it's really interesting. So there's some common other data formats that you might come across. Again, I think you're going to see CSV or Excel, which is basically the same thing, 90, maybe 90 plus percent of the time. If you come across something else, send me a note. We can take a look and try to see how you might be able to work with it. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of some of these formats um, and the affordances or the things that they bring to the table that might be um, better suited for certain kinds of data.